Okay. Today's lesson is for Friday, October 7th, 2011. We're going to begin today's lesson by going over a PowerPoint on free fall acceleration where you'll learn how the kinematics equations that you used yesterday will be used to identify different unknowns for objects that are in free fall or falling. And we'll discuss what that is when we get into these notes right over here. You can go ahead and click on those should you need to access them at another time. And then after that, you all will be working on some independent practice free fall problems where if you have any questions in class, you can ask. Hopefully, you'll be able to finish these before you leave, so that way you don't have this homework that's due next Monday. You can go ahead and click on this link if you want to go ahead and get to those problems. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the PowerPoint. Again, for, for all of our notes, you'll know that we need you to go ahead and fill in any blanks on the handout that you have. That way you can keep up with whatever notes are on this PowerPoint. And that way, you know, you can get you can stay engaged with what we're doing. So it says objects in free fall, and we're gonna again apply the kinematic equations. And um, we should probably begin by talking about what free fall is. So what does it mean to be in free fall? Well, when we say an object is in free fall, we're saying that the object is falling freely, where only Earth's gravitational field is acting on it. There's no external forces other than that. And we're going to kind of get into what that means in just a minute. So on the Earth, because we know that Earth's gravitational field applies a certain amount of force to all objects, we can say that the acceleration for all these objects in free fall is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Really important number here, and I'm going to mention it many times today. You need to make sure that you get this number down so that you can use it on your tests and stuff like that. You're going to see it many times throughout the, the time that we talk today. Okay, so the title of the slide is One Hammer, One Feather, and the reason it's titled that is because if you look at this little picture here, and we're going to get into it in just a second and watch the video, um, the astronaut from the Apollo moon landing actually had a hammer and a feather, and he dropped them at the same time to see um, whether they would land together. Now, Galileo, a famous scientist um, from the past long time ago, had said that if you were to drop a feather and a hammer, that they should land at the same time, assuming that only Earth's gravity was acting on them. Um, you know, the intuitive answer, you know, is that they won't because the feather will get held up. And that's true. The feather should encounter some air resistance on Earth, um, but in a vacuum like the moon, um, the moon's atmosphere, there is no, there is no air in space. So it's a vacuum. And these, these two objects should hit at the same time if Galileo was correct. And again, the acceleration should be negative 9.8 meters per second squared for both objects on the moon in a vacuum. So let's go ahead and, and watch this video and see what, what they had to do up there. Okay, so as we saw there, the hammer and the feather in a vacuum um, did hit the ground at the same time, and it proves that all objects undergoing only that um, force from gravity will accelerate at that speed. Now, um, the issue for, for objects at Earth um, is going to be that they will encounter air resistance, but for our problems, we're going to we're going to assume that there is no air resistance. So we're going to use this acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, what does this mean for working with free fall problems? The good thing is that for all of our free fall examples, one of the automatic givens is going to be that we know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, it's really good that we can use that. And you, you might see that, that I refer to the acceleration as little g, and you might see that in some other places in, in 
you know, formula charts, that sort of thing. Le negative 9.8 meters per second squared, instead of showing it as acceleration, it can sometimes be shown as little g. So you'll want to probably write that in, um, that acceleration is sometimes interchangeable with little g here for objects that are falling. Um, the bad part of this is that for many of the free fall examples, the values for those different variables we talked about, you know, displacement or initial velocities, um, you're, they're not actually going to be um, written in the problem. You'll have to know under special circumstances what they are. And we're going to try to go over those. That way there's no confusion about what they are. Okay, so we're going to be using the same kinematic equations that we used for linear motion. We're just going to substitute, and you'll notice right here, that instead of an x for displacement, we have a y. And that's because the objects are moving up and down. So when the object was moving horizontally, you know, back and forth across our field of vision, um, that would be considered the x um, coordinate plane. And so here, an object going back and forth would be displacement, change in x. But for today's stuff, the objects are moving up and down, so we have up and down motion, and that is the y coordinate plane, right? And so that's going to be um, change in y. Now it still refers to displacement, but we're using y to show that it's moving vertically. All right, so again, the same equations that we've already discussed are up here on the on the board, and they're going to be on your handout, so if you need to refer back to them, again, use the information we learned on how to pick equations to decide on which equation to pick. Okay, so let's look at those special circumstances. So in this first example of an object that was just dropped from a certain height, you'll see this ball was dropped from a certain height, again, we're going to assume that there's no um, air resistance to this ball for these problems. We can automatically know that the initial velocity for this ball equals zero meters per second. So again, in the word problems, they might not tell you that for objects that are dropped. They won't tell you, um, you know, the ball was dropped and its initial velocity was zero meters per second. You just need to know that when it's dropped, it had to have started at zero meters per second for its speed. The other thing you should know is that the displacement, again we're using y for displacement for objects that fall, is going to be negative. So it's going to be some negative number. Okay, And that's going to be important because um, we usually assume that moving up is going to be positive, where moving down would be negative. Just like when we're doing, you know, the the linear motion problems we talked about, you know, if a person started at a certain place and they move to the right, that would be considered positive because on common number lines, the right is positive. And then if they had moved backwards, it would be a negative change in their displacement. It's the same thing here. Up would be positive, down is negative. So if you have an object that's dropping, their displacement is considered to be getting more negative than where it started. Okay? So those are some, some two things. These, these two things are you, you're going to have to pay attention to when you're doing your givens, and that way you don't you don't have any confusion on what your answer should show. Um, you know it should be a negative value, and you should also know that your initial velocity is zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example problem where this happens. Okay, so if we read this, it says an irresponsible zombie drops a bowling ball off the top of a building that is 50 meters tall. Okay, so key here drops is going to tell me my initial velocity is zero. Okay, just like I just discussed, um, that's going to be an important thing that we have to look at. And then over here, the 50 meters tall is going to be the displacement. And again, we discussed the fact that displacement on objects that is dropping is going to be negative. And then they say, how fast is the bowling ball going just before it hits the ground? So they want you to find the final velocity. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the given information here. Um, the first given information is going to be that the ball was dropped, so that's going to be an initial velocity of zero meters per second. The second piece of information that we, we know is that it was 50 meters tall, so the change in y but we're going to put a negative because it's going down, right? We just discussed the importance of that. The acceleration here 
is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. They didn't put negative 9.8 up here, but we know that this object is in free fall, so we're going to go ahead and put the negative 9.8 meters per second squared down here. All right, now the unknown here is going to be final velocity. They want to know how fast it was going just before it hit. So the equation that we're going to use, and if you refer back to the equations we have, the one that includes these four variables would be Vf squared, going to fix that, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2a times the change in y. All right, so for this equation, it's saying that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared, which was 0, plus 2 times the acceleration of negative 9.8 times the displacement, which was negative 50. So up here, we'll go ahead and start the substitution step. We'll replace these, these numbers in for the variables. It'll be Vf squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 50. So 0 squared is going to be 0. And then we're just going to go ahead and make the calculations on the other side of this. So it's going to be 2 times the negative 9.8 times the negative 50. So we can go ahead and put that in. Negative 50 times 2 times negative 9.8. And we end up with a solution Oh, actually, I skipped one step here. So the answer here is going to be 90 plus 980. Sorry about that. I'm jumping ahead of myself. So 0 plus 980 is equal to Vf squared. And then, obviously, 0 plus 980 is 980 equals Vf squared. To get the answer from here, we're going to square root both sides to get rid of the square right there. And we're going to end up with Vf equals the square root of 980, which is 31.3. So our final velocity is going to be 31.3 meters per second for this bowling ball. OK? Um, so again, this is a problem where the object is just dropped. So this second example problem is going to be for an object that's thrown up and then falls back down. Okay, so for an object that's thrown up and then falls back down to its, its original position, um, the final velocity is going to equal the value of the initial velocity. The only difference is that the final velocity would be negative because it's going down. This is going to be a positive velocity because it's going up, so it would be a negative velocity because it's coming back down. Okay, so Let's assume that the initial velocity was 5 meters per second. That would mean that the final velocity for this object would have to be negative 5 meters per second. Okay? The other thing that we'll know is that the displacement... Sorry about that, Bell. The other thing that we'll know by looking at this is that the displacement is equal to 0. So basically, what that means is your change in y is going to be 0 because when you finish, you're back at the same height that you were when you started. So that's where that, that displacement equals 0 comes from. So these two things are going to help us a lot in deciding you know, what our given information turns out to be. So let's, do, let's look at a problem where we have to use this stuff and figure things out. So it says, a Lechusa throws a whistling hand grenade straight into the air with a velocity of 20 meters per second to get the attention of all nearby homes. How long does it take for the whistling hand grenade to fall back down? So she throws it up, and it falls back down. That's our key that the object you know, went up and then back down. So we can go ahead and use the, the information that we just talked about to help, this, to help solve this problem. OK, so what variables do we have here? Um, first of all, we know the initial velocity was 20 meters per second. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that as a given. Um, initial velocity 
is equal to 20 meters per second. And because it's coming back to its original position, we know that the change in y is equal to 0 meters. We just discussed the reason for that. We know that the final velocity is equal to negative 20 meters per second. And again, it's equal to the negative of the original initial velocity. We know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the unknown here, they're saying how long does it take? Well, that's going to be time. So the equation that has, you know, all this information in it, or that has the information we need to solve for time, the best equation to use in this instance is going to be VF, final velocity, is equal to initial velocity plus your acceleration times time. Okay, so we have our initial velocity here, we have our final velocity, we have our acceleration, and we can go ahead and calculate for time. Okay, so we didn't need to use the, the displacement, but it is important to write it either way. Okay, so the substitution for this step will be negative 20 meters per second for the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity, which was 20 meters per second, plus negative 9.8. I'll go ahead and separate that so you don't confuse it. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time. All right, so we're trying to solve for time, so we're going to get rid of all this stuff and put it to the other side. Okay, so the first thing we would do is subtract 20 meters per second on both sides. So it'll cancel here. Negative 20 minus 20 is a negative 40. And we make that equal to the negative 9.8 times the time. You can divide both sides by negative 9.8. And on this side, that means that that will go ahead and cancel out. Let's go ahead and bring the t down. And for us, that just means we'll have to go ahead and do 40, or negative 40, divided by um, 9.8, and you're going to get 4.1. It's time, so it's in seconds. Now, we're going to rewrite this for the solution, so time is equal to 4.1 seconds. So it took this hand grenade, this whistling hand grenade, 4.1 seconds to get through. Go ahead and put it in there so we can see it. Oh, I think I made a mistake there. Sorry, guys. Just give me one second. I might have to edit this out of the video. Sorry about that. You see, it's trying to input it into the thing. So let's go ahead and move ahead. All right, now for this last example, it would be an object that's being thrown up. Okay, so an object that would be starting at a certain position and moving up in its height. So the final velocity will be equal to zero in this example. If you think about it, whenever you throw something up, for a brief moment it pauses before it comes back down. So for this brief moment up here, this final velocity of the object is going to be zero meters per second. Okay, um, the displacement is going to be positive, so the change in y is going to be a positive number. All right, so that's the second thing that we have to know for these objects that are thrown up. Now, it has acceleration of gravity pushing down on it, and that's what causes the object to stop. It's making the object slow down from its initial speed. So let's go ahead and look at an example where that happens. So we've got an example. Boogeyman Baxter jumps up to frighten some unsuspecting children. If he was to jump at a velocity of 3 meters per second, how high did Baxter jump? Okay, so the, the point here is that he's jumping up, right? And they want to know how high he, he jumped up. So we're talking about an object that moved up and then it stopped at a certain height. Or well, it didn't stop at that height, but we're only concerned with this first part of his jump, the height. We're not concerned about him coming back down. And that's really the key word to, to distinguish these problems from the problems before where the object goes up and down. Okay, so in this problem for Boogeyman Baxter, um, the fact that he jumps up 
is going to be an important factor in identifying the given information. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the given information here. And we know that his initial velocity, the speed that he jumps up with, is 3 meters per second. We know that his final velocity is equal to 0 meters per second because at the very top of his jump he stands still for a brief moment or he's not moving for a brief moment. His acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're concerned with how high he jumped, so the unknown here is going to be his change in y, his displacement in the y direction. The best equation to use for this is going to be, if you refer back to your formula, the, the formula that includes this information would be vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2 times your acceleration times your displacement for y. All right, so we're going to go ahead and substitute the information in. So for VF, it would be 0 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times the displacement for Y, which is what we want to find. So we'll go ahead and simplify this and do the math. So 0 squared is 0, 3 squared is 9. And let me get this 2 times 9.8 done for you. It's 19.6. Um, because it's negative, I made a mistake there, right? This is actually going to be um, plus a negative 19.6 times the change in y. Um, to get rid of this 9, we'll subtract 9 on both sides. So we end up with negative 9 is equal to negative 19.6 times the change in y. Now from here, we'll go ahead and divide both sides by negative 19.6 to get rid of it on this side. So... Nine, negative 9 divided by 19.6. Um, because they're both negative, you end up with a positive answer here. It's going to be 0.46 meters. So the solution is going to be that this boogeyman jumped up to a height of 0.46 meters. All right, so that concludes the example problems for today. If you have any questions, obviously you should ask me or email me. Um, but I appreciate you taking the time to go over the lesson. Thank you.